talking on flow and segregation of granular materials as uh, in my introduction i am working as a professor in ghadai so technology ratnagiri uh, in department of chemical engineering uh, thanks for giving me an opportunity uh, presenting my work in front of at international level uh, these are the uh, people or work which is done by uh, uh various researchers on granular flow in india like devang kakka who was my guide kumran keshavrao and prabhu not from iis bangalore and this is my senior i will not discuss more on this uh, this is the brief outline uh, i'll be talking on introduction applications some experimental work and dm simulation and in the end uh, challenges of this thing ah uh, what do we make granular materials uh, granular materials are nothing but collection of discrete solid particles they are not in a continuous nature we cannot apply continuum approach while understanding or of study of granular materials uh, if you look at the images starting from kitchen materials like you know different pulses uh, this rough polymeric material steel balls avalanche land sorry landslides sand dunes and rings of shatters the typical range is 100 micrometer to few millimeters and if you look at the range it, i can say that it present almost everywhere around us these are some motivations and issues regarding the granular materials granular materials are the second largest material which is uh, handled in industry after water so it is available in uh, ample quantities or you know treated widely in all the industries right even in natures the main concern is the governing equation which is established for fluid mechanics similar kind of kind of navier stoke or you know momentum balance equations mass balance continuity equations these governing equations are not yet establish or there for the this granular flow its analysis and designing are also difficult people normally i uh, design based on the experience but it is very very difficult to validate this also right at large scale it is very very much difficult normally the particles get segregated because of its size shape and density even as well as surface even it is too difficult to get you know repeatability of experiments and even if you do a 10 times there will be a standard deviation this is a huge scope from industrial point of view and modeling using discrete element method is widely used in industries these are some representative applications of stating from agriculture and foods to pharmaceuticals you can see fluid as bread dryer tablet coating rotary kiln blenders ball mill jaw crushers everywhere these granular materials are handled the understanding of these granular materials is very poor from industrial point of view even there is no any specific course even at undergraduate level so even not only in chemical engineering but material science nanotechnology mechanical engineering civil engineering geological engineering nowhere such kind of courses are available where undergraduate students can learn so this is very very rare i'll be talking on one of these granular process so i have chosen blast furnace blast furnace is typically uh Uh, used to manufacture a steel right even 60 to 70% of steel in the world is manufactured by using blast furnace uh this blast furnace is uh, if you consider the dimension of blast furnace uh, at a uh, at a real level the height is almost 90 feet which is 30 meter and diameter is 30 feet which is 10 meter so one has to three ratio right but the resistance time which is spent by the gas 
inside the furnace is hardly 7 to 8 seconds so utilization of this is very very poor and that was one of the problems right uh, which i uh, i'm going to discuss uh, as a flow and segregation of granulomer so just to understand how segregation takes place it is difficult to carry out experiments at you know uh, at last scale on you know blast furnace so we have decided to have a simplified model of blast furnace and uh, this this is a experimental setup where this the the aluminum plate acts as an inclined shoot which is used in a in a blast furnace this acts as an hopper to supply the material and the gray part you can see on right schematic diagram the is typically a formation of heap once the material is poured from the uh, you can say from the shoot or when you pour any material what happened during this pouring you just imagine there is an pouring of large and small particles so you can imagine you can see uh, the red particles are large in size and blue are small in size so what happened during flow because of though the the material are same because of difference in size the larger particle travel a large distance and settle at the one corner smaller particle settle at the other corner so if you can typically consider the blast furnace uh, the heat formation length which is in in diameter of 30 meter even if you consider half of the diameter that is 15 meter and if you consider diagonally right by using pythagoras theorem so we'll have a more than 15 feet uh, 15 feet as an length of the you can say inclined shoot so the the inclined shoot or the distance is sufficient for particle to get an extent of segregations what happen because of this segregations uh, if all large particle comes together so you can you can see in the first image all are coming together hello hello can you hear me hello hello yes yes we are able to hear you yeah sorry i thought i i i got disconnected um, so no. yeah yeah thank you so what happened uh, because of this uh the 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 large particles together then you can see the middle one that is all small particles comes together and the end one which talks about the 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 mixture of both now because of this what happens the distribution of gas is is very very poor and that's uh you know affects the functioning of the blast furnace so this is the uh, typical problem in not only in a blast furnace is but in in many in many operations or at many uh, uh flow or heap uh, where this such type of arrangement is normally done so during flow what happens the particle gets segregated so we have all large together small together or either mix so if you look at these three different conditions we have a, a different porosity which in turns affect the uh, performance of blast furnace this is the schematic diagram where uh, of schematic like experimental setup of blast furnace where we did lot of experiments and uh, that experiment talks about uh, different uh, size density then he, the composition volume of pouring height size ratio and then we capture image i will just explain one of the experiments and then i will proceed i hope this screen is visible so if you take a mixture of particles and if i if i add the mixture of particles over here of large or small then they combine together and then 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 they drop down and then they form a heap once the heap formation takes place then you can take I, I took a lot of images, right, and that 
image analysis was done the objective was doing image analysis uh, to understand or the what is the position of each and every particle which is present in the mixture once i we know what is exactly position of particle then and then only i can track how much is the segregation taking place how much is the flow and what type of model can be applied for image analysis this is a simple explanation you can see the last nice image on the left hand side if you if if i consider this square bracket of small particles the everyone knows that every image contains of red green and blue by taking that as an advantage we did a image analysis and uh, the, there was a in house code written in which we have measured the uh, pixels and the uh, particle size so you can see uh, in this particular image where this is the actual image where black spot and uh, large white spot and small white spots the so large white spots are of large particles these are the basically steel balls which whose images are captured from this particular region and uh, everyone knows that this halogen this steel balls if you put halogen lamp or halogen in front of the image that steel ball will get reflects and we took that advantage and this uh, detected particle white cluster converted into binary image and then binary image to the you can see red particles or red dots are large particle which are of 2 mm size and small particle are 1 mm size so images are taken by using nikon camera this is the resolutions one pixel corresponds to this many millimeters and based on the radio subdivision we characterize the size of the particles what happens uh, or for analysis what we have done we have used the the geometry in such a way that this 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 particular part which is uh, as i already mentioned in this in my experimental setup right so what we have done we have divided two region top region and bottom region and particular length is called as flowing layer thickness and that flowing layer thickness we have plotted across the uh, the, uh, the length and x y and all so basically this small x indicates the flowing length and capital x and capital y are the you can say actual image positions which we have changed by using x cos theta and y cos theta now after like we repeated each experiment almost eight times and uh, then we have taken a standard deviation over eight experiments and you can see when we have different percentage of particle i will just explain one of those these uh, results which is nicely seen on the right hand side you can see the blue part indicates the small particles the red part indicates large particles so when i have a mixture of 25% 2 mm particles and 75% 1 mm particles in second case i have 50% 2 mm so obviously 50% 1 mm and in third case i have 75% 2 mm and 25% 1 mm so when i change the composition from 25% of large particle to 75% segregation patterns you can see changes a lot so what I, we can say that the in the first image where you can see some stratification patterns has been observed which is not observed over here so extent of segregation decreases when i increase the percentage of big particles in the right and complete segregation is observed when the uh, large particle percentage are less as compared to small particles another important point is this 15 25 and 35 are nothing but the def in terms of y so i mean to say that this is the surface uh, uh, where it is a zero and from zero we have measure like we have taken a 10 mm by layer thickness layer thickness calculation is done by the 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 experiments in which we have four small particles and large particle intermittently in, in, inter, instead of continuously so we obtain 
effect of composition then volume of pouring i think i no need to explain it again then we we check with height of segregation so we have observed that uh, height of uh, like uh, effect of height is is is, is, is uh like there is up to certain extent later on there is no any effect we have done also our experiment on size ratio so we can clearly see that where the size ratio is 1 as to 3 the segregation is higher when the size ratio is less which is typically 2.2 2 as to 3 that is 1.5 the the region is mix even you can see this weight fraction of big particle versus the position x which is plotted in this this was a static experiment then we performed dynamic experiment same setup no change the only thing is the images are captured at the middle of the experimental setup you can see dotted region and the uh, 1000 frames per seconds uh, images are captured and each image is again detected by using image analysis code and plotted with respect to time you can see this is the 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 detection of small and large particles and in dynamics we have plotted average velocity versus the time you can see how it changes i'll just spend a couple of minutes on the on the, the second diagram what we have observe is the dotted line is the 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 surface line or even where the 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 sufficient number of particles are there above this there is only no any large particle because large particles are Uh, mentioned in uh, red and small particles are mentioned in blue why uh, obviously the large, small particles are jumping over the surface that's why it has been observed but similar to what we observe or what we uh, uh, like understand in shear stress newton's law of viscosity tau shear stress equal to mu into du by dy similar kind of experiments or results has been obtained for uh, flow of solid particles and you can see the uh, the at the top you know large particles are higher and at the bottom right large, the percentage of or at the percentage of small particles are less the the black line indicates the total percentage of small and big particles these are the number density profile this is just for understanding i will not spend much more time on this this is this we have the done uh are pallavi this we have done sorry this we have done area fraction profile for uh dynamics of ground ground material uh, where you can see with respect to time we have observed that before pouring and after pouring layers are seen uh then then other experiments we have just done by changing the amount of composition size and amount i think just to understand where the, uh, the how to optimize the results uh, so i will not uh, explain you can see even the single particle profile with respect to time which is similar to what we have done there is another problem which we have discussed uh, studied uh, as a coke collapse coke collapse is simply in blast furnace when large size material or large density material collapse on a small density material that is coke then in the displacement of particle and that displacement of particle is nicely uh, defined by hawkins in 1988 and that terminology called as coke collapse what we have done is Uh, we have uh, prepared a base of fixed particle of glass beads uh, whose density is 2.5 gram per cc and then pour the large particles of stainless steel whose uh, density is 8 gram per cc why we have chosen taken steel balls and glass beads because coke density is almost 2.5 gram per cc or 2 to 3 gram per cc and steel balls are 8 so just to mimic what happened in blast furnace we have used this the main objective was to find out how much the cracker formation or displacement was taking similar kind of experiment has been performed initially the bed of glass beads was prepared and you can see the dark shade is measured as a coke collapse so you can see the 
dark line indicates the baseline. So the baseline in all the images are same. And the red line indicates the images of, or the line of uh, large density material that is steel ball. So you can see as time increases, right, the crater formation is uh, change. This will give a better idea just to uh, get a uh, more depth detail. We have prepared a bin size of 3 mm by 3 mm. And as I already mentioned, initially there was a glass beads, which is a red. And as we pour uh, the large density material, the red part indicates the density material. The intermediate region, right, colors, is a region of mixing. So then similarly, we have done it for 2 mm, then 3 mm, right? We have studied effect of height on coke crater depth. We have, we have realized that for height between 22 to 28, height means the point at which I'm just dropping the large size particle onto the heap, right? Uh, I think it is observed in everywhere. What has been observed that the after certain time, right, that is uh, like the the, the black line is for 22 centimeter and this three line that is blue, green, and the red is for 26, 20, and 8, and 32. So does not have any effect. Crater depth, of course, increases with falling height and then after some time, it remains constant. Effect of size ratio also we have studied and we observe that obviously when it is 1.5 mm and when it is 2 mm, we got a different results. This was the, uh, the last part which we model using uh, Jenkin, Follett and Paolo Quinn uh, mixture of channel. And uh, uh, what we have observed is the flowing layer and the, 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 what we try to mimic is small and large particles which were talked about uh, in the flow. We have considered uh, flow of mixture in this channel. As I already mentioned, shear stress and that viscosity relationship with static and dynamic, we end up, we try to predict the, you know, the model and model fits in a poly, cubical fit, you can say, but the, you can see uh, the, the bullets are experimental results and the red line is model. Uh, the model is not completely fitted, for this reason, it is still, as I already mentioned, uh, the, you know, to understand rheology of this is very, very difficult. Some people have done continuum approach, but there are some limitations as well. DEM simulation, that is discrete element method, is the best approach where it talks about very famous Newton's law of motions, where there is a force and mass, force is equal to mass into accelerations. There are major measurement of the, the distance between two particles with the time, so ds by dt is velocity, and if if and dv by from velocity if you differentiate, you will get dv by dt, and dv by dt is your acceleration. Acceleration to mass is your force, and torque using torque and force we can call as translation and rotational motions, which is nicely described by DM simulations. What are the uh, challenges, direct comparison with GM simulation is difficult. To develop model for binary and tertiary mixture is also difficult. 3D experimentation is very difficult. Nowadays, people are using particle image velocity metric, but for dry granular material, it is very difficult. What I use are model granular material in my experiments, but in blast furnace, we never use spherical. particles, there are non-spherical particles, so solution is simulations. And in the end, if you add cohesive work, uh, some, some bind binders, then cohesive forces will come in a picture or even the size is less. Powder flow is very difficult. Sorry that I have taken a, uh, like because of technical problems, right? So I, thanks to Tata Steel, IIT Bombay, where I did my PhD and Scientex conferences for giving me an opportunity second time